This past week, I was telling one of our parishioners who drove me to the doctors in Quincy that when I was a pastor, I told the people in the parish that I was a Carmelite for almost nine years. And we lived in silence more than not. And I related, and some of you heard the story, how a man said to me, boy, father, you've made up for lost time. <laughs> and our parishioners said, and then some. <laughs> but I hope and I pray that I am speaking the gospel of the good news. Because that's what God wants for us. Good and wonderful news every single day of our lives. He speaks to us in so many different ways through the gospel, through others, through all of creation. He speaks to us his message of eternal life. Of a life that will never end. Because of the mercy and the love of our God. That's how much he loves us. All of the gifts that God gives to us. And we're so grateful for them. And one of those gifts is that he speaks to us every day. Throughout the day. In so many different ways. Yesterday I had a funeral in Braintree for the wife of a deacon. I was stationed for 10 years in that parish. And when Mike was ordained a deacon, I vested him. And he and his wife Claire are very, very dear friends of mine. And at that funeral, the husband of the deceased gave the homily. Imagine what that was like. And he said to me, if I can't finish it, will you read the rest of it? And I said, sure I will. But he finished it, and he gave a beautiful homily, not just about the life of his wonderful wife of 48 years, about God and the good news and his infinite life. And he spoke about faith and hope and love. And at the end of the homily, a packed church stood up and clapped. They thanked God and they thanked Mike for giving them good news. And then his daughter spoke. And all through Mass, with her husband and her three young children, she had her hand over her heart asking her mother and Jesus to help her to speak. And she'd get up and she said, my mother always said to us, nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible with God. And she would say to us, the Holy Spirit is alive and well and in everyone. And now she said, I'm going to try to prove it. And she gave a beautiful reflection. And she gave with, to us the good news again. And even though it was very sad and very difficult, she spoke about faith and about hope and about love. And you and I, in similar circumstances, do the same thing with each other. We put flesh and blood on the good news of our God. The word of God to us today through the prophet Malachi. God said, you are to give glory to my name. In one of the many ways, but only one of the many ways that we give glory to God's name is not being like the Pharisees and the scribes. Not burdening people, but lifting their burdens as they lift our burdens at other times in life. A teacher wrote a letter to a student who had attempted suicide. 
And after she recovered, she said to the teacher, your letter and your prayers gave me the courage to begin all over again. A simple letter and a sincere prayer gave a young woman the courage to walk into life once again. Malachi the prophet said, Have we not all one Father? Has not the one God created us? We all belong to God the Father forever. He will never let us go. He will never abandon us. And we're brothers and sisters with Jesus, the Lord. God created us for life. He gave us life through our parents. But he created us for life. Life right here and eternal life in heaven. And you know, we're creatures of habit. We hear that over and over and over. But he created us for a life that will never end. Because that's our God. Everlasting love. A mercy that is forever. A life that is eternal. St. Paul said, with such affection for you, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well. And that is our calling in Christ. That is our calling in the Holy Spirit, to share the good news of our God through sharing our lives. You receive not a human word, Paul said, but as it truly is, the word of God, which is now at work in you who believe. We hear the very word of God in the scriptures and at mass. Not a human word, but God's word that is alive and active in you and me because we believe. In today's good news, Jesus said to us, the greatest among you must be your servant. And he not only said that, but he showed us. He served his followers. He got down on his hands and knees, Jesus, who was God. And he washed the feet of his disciples. And he said, what I have done for you, you are to do for one another. We're called to a life of service, like Jesus and with Jesus. And you know, sometimes we say, I'm too old, or I'm too young, or I'm too busy, or what can I do? Remember the teacher who wrote a letter and prayed. We believe in the power of prayer. We know that power in our daily lives. And so we pray for one another. And we pray for the Spirit who inspires us and empowers us to do things. Maybe just like calling up somebody. Someone said to me today she was recuperating and hadn't talked to a friend for quite a while. And the friend called her and came over to see her. And she said, Father, it was such a healing gift in my life. A visit from a friend or a letter like that teacher are so many other ways. I close with the poem that was on the mass program of Claire Cavanaugh, the deacon's wife. And on the back it read, Measure your lifetime in blessings, not in the years you have known. Count up the number of people you've touched and add up the love that you have shown. Measure your days in gladness that you and your loved ones have shared. Tally the smiles on the face of your friends. Total the times that you have cared. Yes, measure your lifetime in blessings, and you'll always remain in your prime. For youth is a feeling you keep in your heart, whether seven or seventy-nine. May we live the gift 
of the gospel of life in the power of the Holy Spirit and with each other. That's what it means to be the living body of Christ. And may we lift each other's burdens for the glory of God.